What's happening? What's good? What's going on? Part of my presence YouTube channel, it uh, seems to be a pattern where I have to make these videos. It wasn't more than a month ago where the rapper PNB Rock lost his life uh, due to being murdered in Los Angeles. And about three months prior to that, another rapper by the name of Jada Youngin was killed in Louisiana. So it's unfortunate that this morning I woke up to the sad news that one third of the Migos, the rapper Takeoff, which was uh, the youngest member, uh, was uh, shot and killed in Houston, Texas. He was only the age of 28 years old. Now, before anything else, I do want to give this a proper respect and say rest in peace to Krishnik Kari Ball, because that's his real name. Forget the entertainer forget the rapper forget the celebrity he is a real person or part of me he was a real person who had families uh who had family who had ties who had loved ones i'm not sure if he was a father or not but he's a real person krishnik kari ball it was his name so we have to put respect on that and send out condolences to his family and loved ones and say rest in peace uh, but having said that, I do have to talk about the circumstances because apparently he was in Houston, Texas. And of course, rappers, they travel a lot. They have to go on tour. They have to meet their fans. They have to be seen. So that's part of the job. But what I what I don't understand is the fact that he was at a, a bowling alley, uh, some type of, uh, I guess, a private event where he was there. And he was shot due or as a result of an altercation playing dice it was a dice game and if you know anything about playing dice then you know a lot of times uh the one of the biggest things that leads to altercations is playing dice a lot of times it's because you're playing with people who don't have money they're ass betting right uh, they might win they make it a hot streak and then once they get the money that they feel that they they have and they want to lose they try to leave Meanwhile, the people who lost the money, they're trying to play and continue to play until they get that money back. So then you have a struggle. And then you have people who, you know, are heated. Uh, you have people, who, again, like I said, who are making ass bets, who can't pay bets off. So they keep playing until they actually win something. If the other team allows them to or other people allow them to. Then you also have people who are betting money that's already spent. Uh, people who are, who are gambling their rent money, gambling uh, the money for pampers and diapers and all that stuff, uh, gambling money that's already been earmarked. So there's a lot of tension that happens at dice games. And none of this is regulated properly. There's no referee. There's no, you know, there's no uh, impartial uh, party that can look at this and say, yes, uh, you know, everything works out. Or yes, you know, the rules were followed. None of that. So all leads to people arguing, and usually who has the loudest mouth, whoever has uh, the most people backing them and supporting them, are usually the ones who end up getting the money because they could take it by force and they could bully people out of their winnings. So it's never really the type of game you want to play, especially if you're someone who is a premier artist like the Migos. And this is the part that I don't understand. Because the Migos are not D-list celebrities. They're not C-list rappers. These guys are not on the same level with all due respect to uh, Jada the Youngin and P&B Rock. They're not on that type of level. These guys are premier acts. The number one rap act or rap group in hip-hop right now. These guys made Bad and Bougie. They made Straightening. They made Versace, Versace, Versace. They made so many different songs. They crossed over. They've done music with pop artists. They've, uh, they've toured all around the world. They've gone overseas. So these guys are not underground acts. These guys are cash cows. For the life of me, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me why they would be involved in the dice game. And I looked it up as far as where they were because they were at a, a bowling alley, which is in the heart of uh, Houston, Texas. But when you do a Google search on the map for casinos, there's a whole bunch of casinos around there. And all I'm thinking is that you have legitimate money, you are, are, are relatively rich, you can easily go to a casino and gamble to your heart's desire, knowing that no one's going to come back and try to regain that money that they lost because it's the house money and they've been making billions. So they're going to give you whatever money is that you want and because they want you to come back. Right. So I don't understand why they would gamble at a dice game and be involved in that type of activity, knowing the type of drama that that brings. Now, the other part that I found disheartening is the fact that you have TMZ who posted up pictures, which appears to be takeoff in his uh, last moments. 
uh, and they blurred some of it, but it's clear to see the condition that he's in is not a good condition. And you see uh, Quavo, who looks to be distraught and is asking for help, uh, according to reports. Now, my thing is this. Uh, at what point do we look at rappers as human beings? Do we look at rappers not for our entertainment or for content for us to consume? It's a sad thing because this is someone's life that was taken away in front of us and how someone got that close to take that type of picture or to have that type of footage it's crazy when you should be if you're that close you should be trying to help uh quavo to help take off you should be trying to help them take him to a car or even the minister of cpr if you can or to help stop the bleeding so he doesn't bleed out so there's so many things that people should be doing if you're someone who witnessed this particular situation you should be trying to help not trying to record and take pictures with the flash and get a good zoom in and make sure it's not blurry and then go and contact tmz and try to get as much as you can and finagle for the right price to sell that footage to them it's a crazy situation it's really messed up that this is what things have come down to so it really feels like black death is a form of entertainment it lights up the algorithms it increases the views and engagement it boosts the ad dollars and revenue meanwhile here is a man 28 years old krishnik kari ball lost his life but yet we have it posted all over the place and you know, what's crazy is if we do a YouTube search right now and put in takeoff, you'll see the amount of content creators who created a video about this, not more than even five minutes long, but they're posting stuff, trying to be the first ones out, try to get the most amount of views and clicks off of this quote unquote trending topic. You also have them posting the video or even doing clickbait, like if they're posting the video. So there's so many different things that are happening. And all of this is a violation. Right? It's a violation on so many levels. It's a violation of the fact that a man lost his life. It's a violation towards the man's family. And there's so many other things that are wrong with it. And then if you were to click on some of these videos, you're going to hear either a robotic voice or you might even hear a voice that sounds like the person is from India or the person's from a foreign country, not connected to the uh, hip hop culture or not connected to black people at all in any, in any way, shape or form. But they are capitalizing off of this. They're exploiting uh, this pain, they're exploiting our death. It's crazy to see, it's crazy to witness, right? So it's something that I, I must state. And I know people might think, well, I'm being hypocritical because here I am, a content creator, putting out the same information. But I, I like to think I'm a little different and I'll explain why, because I'm trying to give some commentary with this. I'm trying to add some context to this. And I'm also trying to give some information that could hopefully help rappers going forward so that they don't end up in this type of predicament that unfortunately we found Quavo and unfortunately take off in this might sound crazy but I think it's time that rappers really reconsider how they move and when I say how they move I don't mean as far as security and making sure that someone's armed what I'm referring to is what you do in your spare time for entertainment for hobbies for fun I think uh, rappers some of these rappers, I mean, they already know, right? They don't go out much. They're with their family. They're low key. They don't wear a lot of jewelry. They don't hang around people that they really have no business hanging around with because they're in two different social classes. But I, I think it's important that we understand that as, as a person who is a public figure, because that's really what a rapper is. He's a public figure. He's the, the face of something. He's a representative of something larger than who he is, whether it's a movement or the record label itself. But he's a representation of so much more. He's the face. He's the frontliner. And what we're seeing is that a lot of rappers are getting in harm's way because they are the representation. They are the face. They are the frontliners. And everybody knows if you're a frontliner, you are at the most risk. And this is why a lot of rappers are dying the way that they're dying, because a lot of these rappers, they feel like they have to wear jewelry, they have to uphold an image, they have to look like they're rich, they have to look like they're wealthy, like if they're cocky, like if they have you know a, a great self-esteem. They have to show all of these things, and they have to uh, put up this front uh, to promote a specific image. And I think it's time that we take away these pressures on rappers 
so that they don't have to put up this image. They, they don't have to be seen because we see so many other rappers who are not subjected to this type of situations, that they're not at the risk of someone trying to rob them or take their jewelry or, or try to shoot at them. You have a few of the highest uh, 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 selling rappers, uh, the biggest rappers, Kendrick Lamar or J. Cole, you don't see them. They're not wearing jewelry. They may not be running around with a large security detail or a hundred person entourage, but they're the biggest rappers ever. Everybody recognizes them. They know who they are, but they're safe. None of these things happen to them. Why is that? Because they're low key? Because they're family men? Because they, they don't go out gambling and playing dice with people who are in a different social class? Maybe it's time that rappers understand that, hey, you're, you're the frontliner. You are the person who's out there. You are the person who is representative. I should be around the proper places, the proper people, and not associated in situations where I might lose my life. Maybe you play poker and have, have that done inside a mansion where it's just you and a few selected friends and you're playing. Maybe not go to the club. Maybe not go to a, a restaurant and have all your jewelry on. Leave, leave all that stuff at home. Leave all the costumes and all of the uniforms that you have to put on to say, hey, I'm a rapper, I'm famous, I'm somebody. Leave that at home. Because I, I think it's a shame that you can't go to a bowling alley and have fun with family, loved ones, and, and friends. But when you're playing dice and you have jewelry and you have a whole lot of cash and you're gambling, None of that is part of bowling. None of that is part of what should be happening in the bowling alley. So none of these things should have happened at all. And we see so many other rappers who are not involved in this type of situation. And maybe, again, like I said, it's the image that they feel that they have to uphold. They can't have security detail, uh, police security detail. They can't have... Um, you know, uh, people in uniforms protecting them. They must appear like if they're thugs, like if they're people who can handle themselves. They don't co uh, They don't cooperate with authority. They must do things on their own. They run the streets. They don't check in or they check in or they rep a certain gang. All of those things, we might need to stop that and take that image away from us. Take that image off of our backs. Because what good is, is it doing the rapper? And why do they need to feel the, why do they need the, the feeling that they need to do that? Or is it coming from the top down where the labels, the, in, the, the record execs are telling them, you need to appear a certain way so that people could buy into your image. And this is the pressure that rappers have to face. Because at, at the end of all of this, they're employees. They're spokespeople. They represent something else that's much bigger than them. And they have no control over it. As much as they say they do, as much as they want to say they're bosses, they're really not bosses. And as a result of that, as a result of not having control over their own image, as a result of not being able to, you know, move a certain way. Because Takeoff seemed like a low-key guy. Takeoff seemed like the guy who would be more indoors and outdoors. Again, that's just my opinion from the outside looking in. I don't know him personally. But he didn't seem like the, you know, the, the rowdy, rowdy type of guy for this to happen to him. He might be the type of one to just you know, stay home and, and, and smoke or drink and just relax and chill. It's just unfortunate that these things have to happen. And it's unfortunate that this, this is going to continue to happen because the image that the rapper has to portray, it puts them in harm's way. And I think it's about time, just like I said with the Kanye West video that I did, how Jalen Brown had to separate himself from Kanye West because his voice and his position cannot coexist and those type of spaces, when is it time that the executives, and we know who they are and how they look and their faith, when is it time that those executives say, you know what, we cannot allow our employees, because that's what these rappers are, our employees, to be associated with these things because they're dying. They're being put in harm's way just so we can make money for corporations, for labels, for the advertisers. When are we going to look at rappers like human beings that have families, that have loved ones? And understand that they're at risk because of their job duties. 
So when are we going to take those job duties away and say, you know what, it's not required anymore? That's the question. So that's just some commentary, some food for thought in regards to the tragic news of Takeoff losing his life at 28 years old. Once again, rest in peace, Krishna Kari Ball. My condolences to the family, his friends, his loved ones. I hope that Offset, I was able to make amends and you guys were able to uh, talk and have a discussion and work things out before this untimely passing because that would be heartbreaking because they're family, right? Quavo was the uncle, uh, Offset is the cousin, and Takeoff was the nephew. They're family, the bloodline, right? So I hope that Offset was able to make amends and they were at peace and they weren't at war because this is a sad way to have to hear about your your cousin and you're never going to be able to speak with him again. And the last you know memory you have is the fact that you guys were at odds. So I hope that wasn't the case. But again, you let me know how you feel about all these things. You can leave a comment in the comment section. You can like, you can subscribe, you could share all those good things. But uh, again, hopefully things change from this. Hopefully the pressure to be the quote unquote type of rapper that they feel they need to be to sell uh, records or to boost uh, views and engagement and streams. Hopefully that changes and we start to value uh, rappers as human beings and as people who have something to offer who have children to raise, who have family that loves them and want them to be around until they're in their old age where they could be seniors, right? So if you let me know how you feel, like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, part of my presence, YouTube channel. Next move, best move. Peace.